If you want to sleep better and lose weight, then the product that you need is called Calitrin, or you can pronounce it Calitrin. Very easy for you to get. Just go to acetj.com slash weight loss. acetj.com slash weight loss for Calitrin. get excited about a whole lot, but I am excited for this episode of Fend for Yourselves. It's going to be great. It is a night at the steakhouse, but it's going to be right here in my kitchen, and then you can do it in your kitchen, and it'll seem like you're out at a five-star restaurant with white tablecloths and those little crumb scoopers that they come around and, and, and use after the bread has gotten onto the table. It's gonna be delicious filet mignon with special mashed potatoes. You're gonna love it. So let's get started. So the kind of potatoes we're using are, uh, they're called Yukon Gold, all right? And they usually come in a five pound bag, not expensive. Just get the whole bag and what we're going to do is use about three pounds of the five pound bag for the recipe so you got to peel it and then we're going to we're going to cut it into chunks now i use one of these uh, potato peelers or vegetable peelers or whatnot you can use a knife and go around it if you don't know how to peel something with a knife look it up on the youtubes so you don't hurt yourself i don't have time to get into all that today so i'm just going to do this with the potato peeler. You just run it over there like that and you see it comes right off. Da da da, beep bop, boop boop boop. It's like that. All right, see how easy that is? It doesn't have to be pretty. Um, don't even worry about that yet. And I usually do this over the trash can, um, but it's kind of hard to demonstrate. I don't want a, a camera on on your my trash. trash can, you'll be looking at my business all up in the trash can. Don't want to do that. Okay. Now just kind of just knock it off of there. A little of the peel is not going to hurt you in any way. Okay. All right. There you go. Now, uh, I'm going to rinse all the potatoes. I'm just demonstrating on one. All you got to do is just put it into chunks. And like I said, it doesn't matter what it looks like because you're going to end up mashing it anyway just cut it in half just kind of go at it again this is a decent size one so cut it like that and then down the middle and you got chunks all right so cut it into chunks big chunks little chunks doesn't matter we got that and that's how you prepare the potato for boiling all right so i got all the potatoes chopped peeled and they're in this pot. Now, what you want to do with the pot is just cover it in cold water like that and then start the fire up. We're going to let that come to a boil and that's going to take a few minutes to do that. But while it's coming to a boil, I'm going to throw some salt in there. Put some salt on it. Put some salt on it. And then I'm going to come back here and I'm going to do this way out here and then I got salt here. <laughs> she gonna kill me she gonna kill me Ooh, that fire's a little high <laughs> hold on hold on now fire going crazy about to burn my rag up all right so we're gonna let that boil hold what you got 
Hold what you got. One of the main things that we can do to make our homes stay comfortable is to make sure that there are no pests in the home. And the best way to do that is with our friends at Cardinal Environmental Solutions. Now, Cardinal Environmental Solutions has over 25 years of experience in the pest control industry. And the thing about it is, is that they are from this area. They serve the uh, entire greater Charlotte area, and they grew up here in Charlotte. They raise their families here in Charlotte. They understand the climate, the soil types, all of the various pests that invade our homes, uh, and they even deal with the bad mosquitoes that we have. So if you need someone to take care and make sure that your house is bug-free and rodent-free, then you need Cardinal Environmental Solutions. They're very easy to find. Just go to acetj.com slash cardinal, acetj.com slash cardinal, and start living pest-free today with Cardinal. Okay, now while our potatoes are coming to a boil, a.k.a. a burl, we're going to do this. We're going to get this ready. and take one cup of heavy cream. Yeah, this is not a diet recipe by any means. It's not right. what you would call clean, okay? So a cup of heavy cream and half a stick of butter, you know, cut into big chunks like that. Oop, get the butter off. Ooh, get it on. All right, so now we're gonna take it over to the stove and we're gonna start it on a tiny heat. We're gonna do tiny heat. And I just want to heat that cream enough and melt that butter so when I go to pour it into the hot mashed potatoes later, it's not gonna make them cold. It's not gonna be, you know, hitting it with a cold liquid and cold butter. So it'll all incorporate a lot better. Okay, so we'll let that go and we'll get some other stuff done while that is doing its thing. As, uh, as the kids say, doing its thizzle, right? Is that the proper term? Th no, thizzang, doing its thizzang. Yes. We gotta prepare some parsley. It's time for the parsley preparation. Now this is parsley. This is the uh, curly kind of parsley. It's not the Italian parsley, which is a flat leaf. This is curly leaf, curly leaf parsley. Like a lot of people, you, you would see this where people just throw that on the plate like that to make it look pretty when it comes out. But we're not gonna do that. We're gonna chop it up. Okay, so pull the leaves off of it. Kind of like we did in the cilantro. When we used cilantro for whatever that dish was that we were cooking that had cilantro in it. Guacamole. So you just, yeah, the guacamole. Just bunch it all up. Get it in a little ball like this. Oh, and... um. Before I do that, let me point out my new cutting board. How nice is that? It's really pretty. We had a, um, a, one of the um, viewers and listeners to our radio show named Joe Beeman um, felt sorry for me in the, uh, the old white plastic cutting board that I've been using, and he made this one and sent it to me. Now, I did offer to pay him for it, but he said he would have none of that. None of that. So... Thank you, Joe. You're a fine man. And thank you for your service to our country. He's a veteran. Okay, so then we're just going to chop that up. Now be careful. If you're not used to doing this and you got a sharp knife and you're running through there. Oh my goodness, I love this cutting board. It is cool. And then just go at it again. You're going to chop it up finely. Finely. Mm -hmm. And I know Mr. Todd's got this camera in the right place. Right? Mm -hmm. Is it in the right place? My arm's not blocking it? Uh, yeah, it is not. Is this, is this working? <laughs> Can you see what I'm doing? Oh my God. Did I, did I mess it up? No, you no. Should. Okay. All right, so you're gonna chop it up like that. That's all you're gonna do. And then, what I like to do with this to make it look really fancy is put it on a tiny paper plate like this. <laughs> so I'm gonna scrape it off in to, on, well, no, I'm not. I'm just going to pick it up. I'm going to put it there. Now, the reason why I'm doing that is because since we are having steakhouse night for the steakhouse experience, I'm going to pretty it up when it's uh, time for Mr. Todd to eat it. OK, 
Okay, so that's all I'm using this for, so don't worry about it. If you don't think it looks good after you chop it, it'll be fine. Okay, you see we got us a boil going here. Potatoes have finally reached the boil. All right, now we're gonna turn the fire down. Turn it down, and we're gonna let it come to like a simmer. Just a barely bubbling kind of simmer. And we're gonna let that go until the potatoes are tender, good and tender. And um, I'll show you how to test whether they're tender or not when it's time. So we're gonna go about 15 minutes at this stage of the potatoes. Okay, uh, it's been enough time. They've been boiling, simmering, whatever. I think they're gonna be ready, but here's how you test them to make sure that they're tender. Um, I'll just do with a spoon like this to make it easier, but you know, you gotta test it. They call it to see if it's fork tender. Now what fork tender means is See how easily that fork goes through and then pulls it apart? Okay, so that is fork tender and these are ready to come out of that boiling water and stop cooking. Yeah. All right, so we got the colander there and we're just gonna pour them off and drain them in that colander like that. Woo! Now it's time to hit it with this buttery cream that we did earlier. So let's pour that in there. Maybe don't pour all of it at one time. Let's see how much of it we're gonna need. And then start with your potato masher and mash. Ooh, we're getting a good mash going. Okay, now you can see that these potatoes are not too wet, right? So maybe they're gonna need the rest of this buttery cream. We'll throw that in there and get rid of it. It's gone, bye. Now here's the thing. You don't want to just completely pulverize the potatoes. You want them to have a little bit of body left in them and not, you know, some people will get a, like they'll whip them. When I say whip them, I don't mean like, you know, some sort of kinky thing or something. I'm talking about with a, like a hand mixer and stuff like that. You don't want them like that. You want them to have a little sturdiness to them. All right, so that's good on the mashing up. Now, we got to season them. So you're going to need to go in there with some heavy pinches of salt. Just, I mean, cause you're gonna want it salty. Like that. Then we stir. And what do we do after that? We taste and we see. First of all, that's hot. Second of all, those are almost perfect mashed potatoes. So, how do we make them perfect? How? How, TJ? I'm gonna put them right here and turn on the tiny flame, as tiny as that flame will go. And then, I'm going to get, <laughs> wait, here it is. Now let's not use this kind. Let's use the salted butter on this one. Since we're not having to do a high heat, we're gonna get some more butter and just go to town on it, all right? Let's open that up. We might as well use a big portion, right? So, don't tell anybody this. They'll be calling the, the fat police on you. So you can't be doing that. So you take about half or more of that stick of butter and just throw it in there and let it sit. Now that 
is going to be delicious. Okay. Don't even stir it. Just kind of move it around where it's even in there and it can melt on its own. Look at that. I need to do this here. Here you go. Uh -huh. That's talent. When disaster strikes, you can count on the emergency damage experts at Paul Davis. Fire, flood, mold, or a storm, it doesn't matter. You can contact Paul Davis. Always devoted, always polite, always respectful of your needs. Learn more at acetj.com slash Paul Davis. Okay, look, we got our mashed potatoes staying warm, all right? They're gonna be fine because this is not gonna take long at all. We are doing the uh, filet mignon and I know filet mignon is expensive, especially now with the inflation and all of that. But remember, this is for a special occasion. This is, uh, you know, for your date night. This is for your, hey, the kids are gone. Let's get a couple of steaks and let's, uh, let's have a nice dinner tonight at home. But I got this one on sale. If you look, you can find them, you know, various cuts of steak that may be on sale at different stores or whatever. So this one was on sale. It's not like from the butcher counter or, you know, from behind the glass where they keep all the, uh, the really expensive cuts of meat, but it is a, it's going to be a delicious filet mignon. It's going to be delicious. Trust me. So we got this and you need to take it out of the refrigerator 30 minutes before you cook it. The temperature needs to lower on the steak. You need to bring the temperature down on it before you start cooking it. You know, help it cook more evenly. And uh, you don't want it at full room temperature because, I mean, that's what they say, you want room temperature. But you don't. It's still cold to the touch, which is not room temperature. Now, uh, you may think, all right, so he's gonna go outside on the grill. But I'm not. Now, the reason why I'm not is because, well, a couple of reasons. One, I'm not that great on the grill. Two, my grill is old and um, not worth being on the TV. And three, I like it better this way. It actually tastes better to me than, than a regular backyard grill. Okay, so it's been out. It's been resting for 30 minutes, getting, getting the temperature down. And all you're gonna do is season it simply with some salt. Okay, and season the sides of it. Just sprinkle salt all over it. Not too much, but enough, you know? So you're gonna sprinkle it all around. Now, a lot of people would say, um, you need to use kosher salt to season a steak. But I don't do that. I like regular salt better. Okay. Then you're gonna take just some plain black pepper, grind that on it, get it all grind simple seasoning because the steak is going to be the star roll it around in that whatever's left on your board here roll it around in that then what i like to do is just add a little bit of creole seasoning on the top of it. just a just a tad like that okay now let that sit for a second and get ready to cook it so you're gonna need a black iron skillet. Now, you say, I don't have one, you need to get one. Get at least a couple pieces of cast iron um, cookware because I use it all the time and it is so good for doing stuff like this. It spreads the heat out evenly. It's just, I mean, it's fantastic. You can get them already seasoned now so you don't have to go through that whole process. They come seasoned. And, you know, they may be a little pricey, certain pieces, but I don't think a skillet this size is going to be that pricey. Now, I have a smaller skillet that I'm going to be using because it's only one steak. Mr. Todd is the only one eating today. So that's why I just got one steak. And another reason, because like I said earlier, it's expensive. Um, now, you got your skillet. You're going to need that. And you're going to need to heat your oven to 415 degrees. And you notice I didn't say preheat your oven to 415 because you can't preheat something. 
Pre means before. You can't heat something before you heat it. You just heat it. Don't preheat, heat, okay? So not only do you get great cooking lessons here, you get great grammar lessons and a, and a, and a grasp of the language. You're getting all that. So let's go. We gotta heat this and get it going and we're gonna do that right now. Okay, for this part, you're gonna need some thongs. You get your good thongs and we are gonna heat this skillet on high. We're, I mean, we're gonna get this thing sizzling hot, all right? So that's gonna take a minute. We'll let that heat and um, check the, oh, the mashed potatoes are still hot right there. They still feel good. We're on track. Now, once you get to this part, this is gonna go quickly. Um, so make sure your oven is already heated to 415 before you start this process. Because what we're going to do is we're just going to sear the outside of that steak. And we're going to get that little crusty thing, that little crusty layer on it that locks in the juice. Like if you're at a real steakhouse. Okay? So let's let that heat and then we'll give you the next step when it gets good and hot like me. Okay, I believe our skillet is hot enough. Uh, one reason I think that is because I see steam coming up off of it. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to the unsalted butter. Remember, because unsalted butter can handle the high heat. It's not going to scorch as easily as salted butter. We're also going to need to turn this fan on, because I'm not going to lie, it's going to smoke up this place. I told you earlier that it's going to do that. So I'm going to put it all the way, and I probably even have to open a window. So you got it going, throw that butter in there. Now we're gonna turn the heat down a little bit, but we want this butter to melt. Get all in that skillet. Now it already looks like it is, it's burning, but it's not. This is gonna be delicious, trust me, trust me, trust me. Get it all melted down. Now how much butter is that? That's a half stick. That is uh, the other half of the unsalted butter stick that we use for the creamy butter. I hope y'all can hear me over this fan. And we're probably gonna end up having to open the door too. Now, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna throw that steak in there. And we're gonna crank the heat back up a little bit. And it's gonna sear like that for two minutes. Set the timer. For two minutes. Now be careful. This this skillet, the handle and everything is really hot. So let that go. If you want to move it, get get us something like this if you want to rearrange it. But don't touch that skillet. You know, it's gonna burn you. I don't want that to happen. Because I know you got pretty hands. And I don't want to mess up your pretty hands. So a minute and a half left. Alright, so while it's while it's on that two minutes, you may want to take it, kind of turn it, put some of that butter on the top, kind of baste it a little bit, spoon it up in there. Mm. Okay, just a few more seconds. We're coming up on the uh, on the two minute mark. You got to stay on top of it, and that's why I wanted to get the mashed potatoes done and get that out of the way and, and ready to go, because this is all crucial. Okay, now it's smoking in here. It's crazy. Now we're going to flip it two minutes. Now look at that. Look at that crust on it with that sear and those juices are seared in there. And then we're going to do that same thing. We're going to baste this side a little bit. Mmm. Mmm-mmm. -mm. Look at that. Okay, we're at the two minute mark on this one. Now, uh, Mr. Todd has to get that camera out of the way because he's in the, in the way of my oven. All right, get back. Here we go. Watch yourself. Throw it in the oven, you see it's smoking, it's gonna smoke even more. Mr. Todd likes his steak medium. So I'm gonna leave it in the oven for six and a half minutes and that'll give him a perfect medium. Now, when you go to the website for the, um, for the recipe at uh, finforyourselves.com, I'll go ahead and list out the times. So how long you cook it if you like yours rare, medium rare, medium, you know, so forth. I'll put all the times on there, but he likes his medium, so six and a half minutes is what we're going to go. All right, here we go. Time's up. Now watch how much smoke comes out of here. 
I hope the fire department doesn't come. Look at that. Oh, it's gonna look like it. Don't worry. Don't panic. Now, get it right there. Oh my goodness. Now, we're gonna go ahead and put this on a plate. Like that, right? And we're gonna let that rest and the juices all get up in there so they don't escape. We're gonna let the juices soak into that for five minutes. So let it sit there for five minutes. And I'm setting a timer. Okay, it's been five minutes and it's time to get everything, as they say, plated up. And just look at that. I mean, this is gonna be so delicious. Perfect mashed potatoes with that butter all in them. I'm just gonna put this much right here. And then Todd, you can have however much you want, but just for the first thing, I'm slopping them out here like a prison cafeteria. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna take this delicious steak. Can you see this steak, Todd? Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna put it like this on the mashed potatoes. Then I'm gonna take this and pour it on that. And then I'm gonna go over here and put my glove on again. And I'm going to spoon a little bit more of this over that steak. All right, now if you're doing this for you know, trying to impress somebody or you got a date or whatever it's for your significant other. Then you go and get your paper towel here and you wipe all these edges off. Get in there so it doesn't look like a mess. You just kind of tidy it up a little bit around the outside of the plate like that. Then you go back to that parsley we were talking about and you just kind of sprinkle it around And then you go back here and you throw it like, bam, like that. Just whoop, hit it. And that is what it looks like. So, Mr. Todd is about to be taste tester Todd, but this is gonna be his lunch and dinner for tonight. So we're gonna see how he likes it. Okay, here we go. Uh, we're on the special new taste tester cam. The taste tester cam. Todd cutting into it. Dude, I feel so much pressure. Mm -hmm. How's that look? Is that about Dude, the way looks, you like it? Yeah, it looks amazing. Is that the right amount of medium that you want? Yeah, let me see if I can show you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you want me to do mashed potatoes in it all, like, yeah. all at once? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm assuming that's why you put it on top. Mm -hmm. I but, mean, I mean, you can cut that piece of steak one more time. I eat big bites. All right, go ahead. You're off cutting. Yeah, you got a big mouth. Ooh, Jody's gonna be mad because fly in here. All right, how's that? All right, that's good. Dude, that is really good. Oh, I swear to God, best steak I've ever had. Don't lie. No, I'm serious. Why best you steak I've ever had. And the mashed potatoes are amazing. Now that would cost you $100 at a steakhouse. Dude, yes. Probably, probably $500. You asked me probably, earlier about going to a nice steakhouse and I was a couple weeks ago and ain't got nothing on this. Dude, this mm -hmm. is really good. Yeah. Um, that steak right there will probably cost you $5,000 at a steakhouse or more. I believe it. Dude. All right, so there you go. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> steakhouse night on Fend for Yourselves. Uh, it's, it looked like it had a lot of steps. It looks like it takes a long time, but not really. Uh, you can do it. You just, again, have to stay on top of things and, and pay close attention to what you're doing. And this could be like your go-to uh, fancy meal. And even though it seems like it would cost a lot to buy the stuff at the grocery store, like I said, it would cost you more at a restaurant to get this and try to catch the uh, steak on sale. Now you can do uh, different kinds of steak too. If you want a ribeye or whatever, you can do it the same way. And when you go to fendforyourselves.com, I'll have a little section in there about the timing of a ribeye and the thickness and how long you put it in the oven and all of that. So. 
again thank you very much for watching i love doing these i hope you like uh, i hope you like in, uh, you know watching and 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 sharing with uh, other people what you've learned and the recipes and all that i just love it so i'll keep doing it if you keep watching but if views go down then oh, i'm out stop. i'm out i'm out stop. i love you i love you all but i got to go all right finish that that actually looks Dude. more more medium rare than it's actually no it's perfect yeah. it's really good mm -hmm. seriously let me get a bite of that oh. no don't, y'all don't have to sit down